Hello and welcome to The Aid Station. I'm Chris Robb and today catching up with someone I worked with in the Sydney Olympics, Dave Budge, who is uh, tuning in from Perth in Western Australia. Dave is the operations director of an organization called The Event Team. Hey Dave, how are you, mate? Yeah, hi Chris. Yeah, good to catch up again. Yeah, great to catch up. It's, uh, you know, we worked together obviously and then we kind of lost contact in the, in the last couple of years. We've reconnected again and um, it's great to catch up with your story again. There's, I think there's some amazing things that you're going to be able to share with the viewers. And I think one of the really exciting things is this great positive story, which we'll touch on that you announced at the weekend that you've got an event coming up. Things have been uh, kind of wound back in, in Australia and it's, it's pretty exciting times in many ways. But why don't we start a little bit with just, you know, a little bit of your backstory, please. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, gee, I've been doing this all, well, that was my first event actually in 1991 which was a, uh, a Coca-Cola, a Quaplon series at Scarborough Beach here in Perth. <clears throat> um, so just with a couple of mates, we put that together. A uh, bit of a battle of the codes between surf lifesavers and, uh, and triathletes. And, you know, obviously mass participation was a lot smaller back then. You know, we had 200 an event, it was considered huge. So I went on from there in the mid nineties, uh, I was able to secure a position uh, as a sports administrator. So I uh, started as the first executive officer of Triathlon Western Australia. Um, so that was, you know, running the sport and uh, also uh, you know, my first full-time foray into events. Uh, so I ran all the events on behalf of the uh, association and it was a pretty busy calendar back then as well. So it was a, a thrown in at the deep end and, uh, and, a, and a steep learning curve. Uh, so, you know, we were doing probably 15 events a summer. So it was, uh, you know, if it wasn't every weekend, it was every other weekend. So that uh, that kept me busy, certainly learned a lot. Um, from there, I went on to work for Tourism Western Australia. Um, so I was the race director and event manager for the 2000 IT World Triathlon Championships in Perth, uh, which were, was big. Pretty fortunate living in Western Australia that we have a uh, government tourism department that is really vested in events and can see the benefit of um, you know, of uh, paying for and bringing big events and sporting events to WA. So, um, yeah, so that was my first you know, full-time job on a, on a big event like that. Um, and then, as you said, moved on from there, um, got to work with a great team um, at SOCOG under Eddie Moore and David Hanson, um, myself. Um, so the, the road event team, so I worked on the triathlon, but also worked with you on marathon and some road cycling as well, which was Fantastic. I can't believe, you know, September the 16th this year, it's 20 years. Uh, Amazing, isn't it? It's yeah. flown by in some ways, yeah. Yeah, so uh, went from there, uh, post-Olympics, moved back to, to Perth, um, did a few little bits and pieces, but then became the Chief Executive Officer of uh, the WA Cycling Federation. So I worked in cycling uh, for a couple of years and had a little bit of a side hustle going then. So I started a company called Tri Events. Um, so mainly triathlons, we also uh, organised the Perth City to Surf as well, uh, which was, uh, you know, by today's standard, probably a mid-sized event. We started off, uh, I think it was about 10,000 when I when I picked it up um, and, yeah, worked on that for, for eight years. And it was nearly 37,000 by the time we finished uh, working on that. So I uh, worked in that cycling job for... Uh, for two and a half years and then you know decided it was time to take that leap of faith and um, you know work for myself um, with a couple of business partners so really pushed on with with tri events uh, and then yeah we sort of developed the brand and uh, you know we were doing sort of 25 events a year a mixture of, of fun runs and uh, triathlons obviously um, which is what we've done uh, a lot of but yeah okay that provided us opportunities to pick up a lot of things that came to Perth, we, we established a good reputation. Um, so, yeah, managed to sort of grow it from there. So, yeah, and and that uh, that went on for a couple of years uh, till 2018. And it all finished, we'll talk about that later. Uh, and then um, two years ago, nearly uh, to the day, actually, um, with a couple of uh, colleagues uh, you know, from, from Tri Events, we started up uh, the event team, a bit of a smaller entity, so we're just concentrating on, on fewer events, but, but larger events. So, yeah, we're almost coming up to our second anniversary of, uh, of the event team. So, yeah, over that sort of 
probably 25 year journey. I've probably organized you know, five or 600 events. I've never really counted them, you know, actually it's not, not what I do, but um, you know, everything from, you know, smaller events and, you know, through that, through the opportunity um, I've event directed or race directed five world championships in three different sports. Um, right. So, you know, it's a great yeah, story. That's yeah, yeah. amazing. What a what a what a what a mixture from you know all the way up to the elite and Olympics and, and everything is is incredible. And and as I said in the, in the intro, it's a it's exciting times. I mean, you've been through you know the the COVID lockdown and uh, you know all those sorts of things. And uh, and and you, you you announced at the weekend uh, that you know you you've got an event coming up. Tell us a little bit yeah, about that. Yeah. So it's, it was an interesting process. You know, when in, in the same as everyone else, and been you know. It's, uh, through connecting with yourself and the, and the MPW community around the world, um, you know, sharing stories with everyone. It's almost like a little support group that we get together you know, on a on a Monday afternoon or, or Thursday during the week and just hearing everyone else's story. But we were like everybody else, thinking, you know, you know, what's ahead of us? Um, probably a little bit different um, in Perth, where we're fairly isolated, uh, and in Australia, obviously, we're isolated as well. So um, our case rate was was fairly low compared to what we were seeing, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere, America, Europe, UK. Um, you know, so despite us having restrictions imposed on us, we were, we were um, you know, confident that, you know, that it, it could be a, a short-term thing and, and uh, everyone sort of, if everyone behaved and you know, did, did what was required and, and that's, that's what's happened. So we've just come out of those restrictions uh, announced and with a with a bit of a, a roadway um, too, so we were able to announce last week that uh, a mountain bike and trail run event that that we've run for eleven years um, is uh, you know, if things don't turn around, then that'll go ahead on the nineteenth of September. And uh, it was good. I mean, a lot of people you know that are listening probably think you know the same way that we've been working for the last three months on events, but not. Being confident that they'll actually go ahead, so you know, getting motivated to you know to, do, to deliver to that standard. Um, well, putting all this work in, and, and it could get pulled at any time. You know, listening to um, you um, and Mike Nisky last week, you know, with those events in in uh, in America, thinking I, I really feel for me. I was kind of buzzing because I knew I was ahead of us, and, and you know, you do feel for, for people as well. But um, yeah. But, so we were able to announce and you know, great response in terms of you know, entries. I think people are gonna be a little bit nervous because they'll probably enter closer to the event, you know, wanting absolute confidence that it'll actually go ahead. Um, but the engagement on social posts um, you know, was, was one of relief. I think people are, even though it's been you know, three months in the scheme of things, not a long time. Um, but, you know, people are, are keen to get back out there and, and um, you know, do what they, I love doing it. So. Yeah. Wow. That's 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 a, that's a great story. And obviously, you know, during this period of time, you've you've gone through a lot of challenges, as you alluded to. But you're also a person that's you know been through some challenges in in, in your life and your business. You touched on you know your previous business, and I, and I think you know at, at this time and and you know really respect the fact that you're 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 happy to have a little bit of a chat about it because there's many people you know struggling with you know what's it going to be like trying to keep their businesses going through this and you, you've been through through some fairly challenging times from a business perspective and can you maybe share a little bit about that with us Dave? Well, I have yeah so um so 2015 we were approached by um one of the big media companies in Australia um about doing some joint ventures uh, integrating some of their um, products into uh, into some events or creating some events out of that, uh, and that developed into an acquisition uh, proposal. So we were bought out by Seven West Media um, in 2015. Um, you know, and that was you know fantastic for you know, Australia's biggest media company. Um, you know, and we we'd had a plan to do you know all sorts of things and outside of support and mass participation, moving into other areas as well, which you know was was exciting because. Sort of got to that point in my career where you know I've been doing a lot of what you know fun runs and triathlons and swims and things like that for you know for 15 years. So we're looking for another challenge, and you know that that was part of that proposal. Uh, unfortunately for us, the people that were involved in that acquisition from their side at the executive level, um, for whatever reasons, all got moved on. Uh, we were parked in the corner for a, for a couple of years, just doing 
you know, what we, we did. Um, the Australian media landscape, I think, is challenged at the moment, with uh, revenue in particular. Um, so rather than concentrate on new business opportunities like had been, you know, agreed on, you know, with us, um, you know, they were looking to you know, salvage their business or change that model into the, you know, to the digital world. So, so eventually, um, so the 2000 and 18, um, they decided to, to wind that up, um, which was was disappointing. Obviously, it had been, um, you know, not my life's work, but most of it. Uh, and obviously, we achieved a lot and uh, we had a lot of, you know, success over that time. So to, to have to close the doors on that um, at the time was, you know, it, was pretty, it hit pretty hard. Um, but, you know, you're feeling as, you know, well, you know, what opportunities are going to present themselves and sort of, um, you know, morale and self-esteem takes a bit of a, you know, a bit of a kick in that in that phase. But um, yeah, it didn't take long. Like people got around me, um, you know, and so it was, you know, quick to see that you know what we still that we still had relevance uh, and that you know we had a lot to to contribute. Um, but it also took that opportunity for us to have a look at what we were doing. Going look. You know, are we delivering the best products we can when we're doing 20 or 25 events a year? It doesn't give you time to sort of come up for air or it's, you know, you're ticking, you know, events off rather than going, you know, is this the best experience for people? Um, you know, so um, got together with a couple of guys from, from, from Tri Events and decided that, you know, the model has to be, um, you know, less events, um, but using that time to be more creative. Um, so we put together a company. We had to go back and tender for some of the bigger events that, that we were running as tri events. So uh, HBF run for a reason in Perth, Rottenness Channel Swim, um, an Ironman 70.3 in Bustleton. And we're able to you know, secure those events, which was, which was good, um, which gave us you know, enough revenue to, to run the business. Um, I've got to say, those, the first time that we ran those events as the new entity, um, you know, bearing in mind I'd done, you know, it was, I've done 17, 70.3s as, you know, at, you know running the events. Um, but I've got a greater feeling of satisfaction as the new entity, um, but because we were able to do a little bit more with them and, and deliver the events, the same with HBF Run. Um, so, yeah, it was, got to the end of it, you know, thinking, you know, back to probably enjoying it more than I had done for the last six years because, you know, previously you'd finish an event and you're just worried about what's next rather than, you know, celebrating. I think celebrating is a really important part of doing what we do. We don't come up for air, you know, and you know, uh, you know, then what's the point of doing it? Oh, it's a great story, and, th and thank you for sharing it. And I think you know the reality is that you know it's already starting to happen. Sadly, that you know there are people in in our industry that are you know having to wind up their businesses, and you know that that hit that you get on self esteem and and the like. And 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 I think it's a great example of you know there's always other opportunities people in our industry build such amazing skills particularly someone like yourself who's been around for for, for decades literally that, that are often transferable whether they're in the industry or elsewhere but if there were is there was any particular lesson or takeaway that you could leave i mean you spoke about celebrating your, your wins but in any particular one or two lessons that you would leave with people that, that are watching that are going through these tough times right now yeah, well, you know, through this last three months and then through the two years previously, it was an opportunity to reflect on, you know, on your, your business, how you do things. Um, and, and that's sometimes hard to do if you get, you know, bogged down. Um, through my period, particularly sort of back in the, in the late 90s and early 2000s, I, was, I came through a period in, in mass participation um, where I had great mentors. Um, you know, I, I grew up sort of under the wing of David Hansen um, from Super Sprint and Gar Proud from USM. Yeah. And we've, we're seeing now that collaborative approach where people are very sharing in, in um, you know, concepts and ideas and, you know, new normals and things like that. But I had that back then where, you know, they'd, you know if I wanted to come over for an event, just have a bit of a look around or even staff that I hired, um, you know, that... It, you're always doing things one way, then you'll only learn one way to do things. Um, but you know, it would be nothing for me to pick up the phone to David or Garth and say, that I've got um, three new event staff. I think they could benefit from coming to a Noosa triathlon or coming to a, you know, a corporate team triathlon in Melbourne and Sydney and just see how bigger events run and then you know, getting some, 
you know, I'll get them there if you can just give them a role. Um, so we, you know, we do that for, for a long time. Um, so, you know, always working on that personal development stuff. Don't think that the way you do things at the moment, um, you know, is where it stops. So always looking for those improvements, different ways of doing things. And you know, so certainly, you know, coming out of tri events uh, and into the events team, that gave us a great opportunity to say, what didn't we enjoy or what was what was a challenge and how can we do it better? Um, so, you know, that's that's coming out of that. I've got to say the last couple of years have been you know, probably a lot more enjoyable for me and a lot more relaxed, you know, than perhaps the years, you know, before that. Um, that's a great yeah. insight and, and so much that less is more as well. You so often see people as like more and more and bigger and bigger and, and, and often it doesn't make commercial sense and it also doesn't make personal sense for, for, for the business owners and the team. So some great insights. Thank you. Um, as always on the aid station, I like to end with something inspiring. I know you've got a, a very inspirational story to share with us and I'd love you to, to tell us that, please, Dave. Yeah, it was a hard one to pick because, you know, having seen so many events and, you know, over the years, um, but one of my favourites, we managed <clears throat> um, to deliver the World Masters Athletics Championships in 2016 in Perth and it was just such a great event. It was, you know, it was a, a two-week event. We had 4,000 athletes from all over the world. I think we had over 90 countries represented. So it was, you know, for, it was a... I think it's actually the biggest athletic event, uh, annual or biannual event, you know, because of the participation numbers. So, and so many great stories from that as well. But one of my favourites is um, there's a Perth guy um, who passed away last year, John Gilmore. At, he was, you know, within, you know, sight of 100. It's like getting out on 99, he passed away. But John has a great story, um, former POW, but just, you know, people that know distance running will know of John Gilmore for what he's done over the years. But so John had entered three events, um, only ended up doing two because he, he got a little unwell. But um, so he won the, won the 800. Um, he actually ran with a catheter bag and he had a urinary tract infection as well. So you talk about tough guys. Like he'd been through, um, you know, Changi prison as a prisoner of war back in World War II. Um, but, you know, just being able to watch him run and finish. Um, and at that age, he was as sharp as you could get. Like his recall was fantastic. Like he finished, went over. There's a bit of press around. Um, you know, almost ran the press conference himself. And like it was, it was just unbelievable to be there um, and you know and witness you know that. We all hope to go on you know to make the hundred, um, but he didn't. But yeah, being able to witness that, um, you know is equivalent to, you know, we did the world, uh, we did uh, Melbourne Ironman in 2012, I think it was, where, where you know, Crowey and Cam Brown ran shoulder to shoulder um, for 42 Ks, um, you know, which was a special moment at that elite level, but to watch, you know, age group athletes, which was, you know, where a lot of us in the mass participation space in our money, they're the ones that, that, that come in masses, um, but to, to watch that was, was uh, unbelievable. So. That's amazing. And you said, I think you said he was 93 at the time. Uh, 97. 97 at the time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's so, uh, yeah. And, you know, didn't, we went and picked him up from his, from his home. So he's sort of, he, um, his wife was ill years ago. She passed away some time, but he had a 10K course in his backyard. So up the side of the house, around the, you know, around the clothesline and, and back, you know, there was so much about him that was, was incredible. He's written two books if people want to look them up, you know, with some of the story. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's right up there with what an amazing story. Doing, you know, the stuff that we did at the Olympics, which we'll never forget. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's right up there. It's so special about our industry is 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 there's those money can't buy experiences, seeing those things. Dave, such a such a pleasure to catch up. Uh, we we could certainly talk for way longer, but uh, time time ticks away on these. But thank you so much. Great to catch up again and. Look forward to seeing you in person soon and all the best with the, the event in September. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Thank you. Mate. Bye.